Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. My name's Matt. Today we're going to be taking a look at the world's first long-range surface-to-air missile, the Bowmark. In the late 1940s, Boeing began work on a surface-to-air missile, then described as a pilotless interceptor. The project was codenamed MX-1599, and the Michigan Aerospace Research Center, or MARC, joined Boeing to work on the program. The MX-1599 was a long-range, supersonic, nuclear-tipped surface-to-air missile, or SAM, detonated by a proximity fuse. The missile went through a number of official designations as it was developed during the 1950s, finally becoming known as the BOMARC, an acronym of Boeing and the Michigan Aerospace Research Center. The BOMARC was launched horizontally using rocket boosters before its main ramjet engines took over enabling it to cruise at Mach 2.5, which is about 1,920 miles per hour. The initial Bomark A had a range of 200 miles, with an operational ceiling of about 60,000 feet. The missile was ground-controlled using NORAD's Semi-Automatic Ground Environment, or SAGE, system, until it neared its target when an onboard radar took over. The Bomark could be tipped with either a 1,000-pound conventional high-explosive bomb or a low-yield W-40 nuclear warhead. These were detonated by a radar proximity fuse, with the W-40 having a yield of about 10 kilotons. The missile had a wingspan of just over 18 feet, or 5.5 meters. It was 45 feet long, or 13.7 meters, in overall length, and weighed about 16,000 pounds on launch. The US Air Force intended to use the missile to engage incoming Soviet bomber formations, and later ICBMs. Originally planning for over 50 Bomark launch sites, only one was operational by 1959, and only eight were operational by the early 1960s. The upgraded Bomark B was developed in the early 1960s. It had an improved radar and a greater maximum range of 430 miles, as well as having a higher operational ceiling of 100,000 feet. The Bomark was stored horizontally in specially built semi-hardened bunkers and kept fueled and ready to launch at a moment's notice. When targets were detected, the missile would be raised and launched vertically. One of the dangers of keeping the missiles fueled became clear in June 1960, when a nuclear-armed Bomark A caught fire, exploding the onboard tank and contaminated part of Maguire Air Force Base with melted plutonium. Despite this, the missiles remained operational for over a decade, with the first sites being deactivated in 1969, and the last stood down in 1972. While the Bomark missiles were the world's first operational long-range anti-aircraft missile, they were too slow to achieve operational readiness to keep pace with the rapidly changing nuclear threat as both superpowers transitioned from bomber-focused to ICBM-focused strategies. They were expensive to manufacture and difficult to maintain at readiness. In the late 1950s, the Bomark was also embroiled in a war of words, with the US Army arguing that their short-range Nike Hercules missile was more effective. The Hercules remained in Army service through to the 1980s, albeit as a frontline air defence missile, rather than targeting Soviet ICBMs and bomber aircraft. The Bomark was an ambitious project when it began in the late 40s, but with technology and Cold War nuclear strategy rapidly evolving, the Bomark was almost obsolete before it became operational. A total of 570 Bomark missiles were built between 1957 and 1964, with the US and Canada being the only countries to deploy them. This Bomark is a part of a great collection at the Hill Aerospace Museum in Utah. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Bomark. We're going to take a look at a few more missiles in the future, so I hope you'll stop by for those videos. For more information on the missile, check out our full in-depth article on the Bomark over at thearmorersbench.com. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video and our other content, please consider supporting us over on Patreon. Tab is a project which is entirely supported by you guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.